story recaps here. Today I'm going to explain a fantasy, horror, and mystery film called Fantasy Island. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. One fine day, Julia informs Mr. Rourke that the plane they've been waiting for has finally arrived. The man then gets his staff ready to greet their guests, Melanie, JD, Brax, Patrick, and Gwen, who all want a contest to stay on Fantasy Island. Julia introduces herself to the winners as Rourke's assistant, saying he'll meet them later before taking them to their rooms. At the same time, a man named Damon watches them from afar. Moments later, stepbrothers Brax and JD wait at the bar while the other guests settle in their rooms. Meanwhile, Julia tells Gwen that Rourke tailors each fantasy specifically to the guest, adding that her life is about to change forever. Then, Julia's nose bleeds as she leaves, but she just wipes it off and continues to walk away. Once Julia's gone, Gwen notices some footprints in the bathroom and sees a burnt man in the mirror, but he quickly disappears. That night, the guests gather at the bar while waiting for Rourke. There, JD reveals to Patrick how his dad married Brax's mom when he was still a kid, and the men introduce themselves to each other. Meanwhile, Melanie asks Patrick what his fantasy is, wondering what his room will look like, but he doesn't know how the whole thing works. So, Melanie says it's virtual reality, and Patrick starts to think that it will be some sort of immersive experience. However, Gwen wants to know if the fantasy will involve a person from their lives. Thankfully, Rourke finally shows up to answer their questions. After properly introducing himself, O'Rourke reveals that there's only one fantasy per guest and that they must see it through to its natural conclusion. He also adds that fantasies rarely play out as anyone might expect, but they always play out exactly as they should. At the same time, O'Rourke says that everything will begin after a good night's rest, but since JD and Brax don't have the rooms yet, the host informs them their fantasy is about to start. A few minutes later, JD and Brax follow O'Rourke outside. While walking, JD keeps calling Brax T, an old nickname he hates. Then, Rourke brings the brothers to a rave at a mansion, revealing that their fantasy is to have it all. Once he leaves, JD parties with different women and Brax enjoys the company of men. After a while, Brax sees a burnt man arrive at the mansion, but he thinks his eyes are just playing tricks on him. The next day, Rourke summons Gwen to his office, where he talks to her about her fantasy of getting a do-over. Then, Rourke learns that she turned down a marriage proposal before. Rourke wants to know if Gwen would say yes if she could do that moment over, and when she says she would, he leads her to a room where her fantasy awaits. Behind the doors, Gwen finds her ex-fiancé, Alan, waiting for her at a restaurant. Then, when they reach their table, Gwen gets confused because Alan is being nice to her even though she didn't speak to him for five years. However, Alan says he has no idea what she's talking about, saying he saw her in his bed that morning. Realizing everything is not real, Gwen tries to talk to Rourke and says that's not what she wanted. However, the host simply tells her not to ruin her second chance to say yes to Alan's marriage proposal, adding that everything is as real as she makes it on Fantasy Island. Meanwhile, Patrick joins Melanie as she drinks and finally reveals his fantasy to enlist. But his mom made him promise that he wouldn't. On the other hand, Melanie admits that her fantasy is to exact revenge on her bully, Sloane. Melanie had to see a shrink she calls Dr. Torture because of Sloane, and now she wants to feel what it's like to be on the other end. As if on cue, Rourke shows up and instructs Melanie to head to the elevator and push the button for the floor with no name. Melanie then notices water dripping inside the elevator and upon reaching the designated floor, she starts recording and places her phone on a shelf. She then turns on a switch and finds Sloane in another room separated by glass, gagged and bound to a chair. Melanie thinks Sloane is just a hologram and reads the letter left for her, stating she can press the buttons for a variety of revenge. Eager to get back at Sloane, Melanie presses a button which electrocutes her bully. She then pushes more buttons to continue torturing Sloane and eventually sees a video of her with a man who's not her husband, happily posting it online. After that, Melanie presses another button and sees the footage of Sloane's husband, Will, who watches his wife's leaked video and calls her to know if that's where she's been in the last two days. At that moment, Melanie realizes something is wrong and presses another button, seeing a video of Sloane being abducted. So she quickly calls Rourke and says she's done, unable to believe that the host would actually kidnap Sloane. Meanwhile, Rourke takes Patrick into the woods where Damon warns him that the entire island is not what he thinks. However, their conversation is cut short by some soldiers, so Damon immediately hides. Patrick tries to tell the soldiers he's part of a covert operation, but the men don't believe him and take him with them. Back at the restaurant, Gwen finally accepts Alan's marriage proposal despite knowing it's just a fantasy. At the same time, the stepbrothers find a panic room in Armory where Brax decides to take a grenade. Then, the two go to the beach and JD throws the grenade into the water using a baseball pitching machine. Meanwhile, Patrick finally meets the soldier's leader, Lieutenant Sullivan. 
Of course, Patrick instantly recognizes the man as his father and demands to see Rourke, yelling that's not what he asked for. Then, Sullivan sees his name on Patrick's dog tags and asks him how that happened, but they soon get attacked by their enemies. Patrick can only stand there as the men exchange fires and unfortunately, he gets shot and passes out. On the other hand, a surgeon suddenly enters Sloane's room. Melanie then bangs on the glass to stop the surgeon from hurting Sloane, realizing he's Dr. Torture. However, Dr. Torture ignores her and cuts Sloane's arm, so Melanie presses a button which triggers a loud alarm and distracts the doctor. After that, Melanie instructs Dr. Torture to cut off Sloane's right ring finger, but when he's about to do it, Melanie presses a button and electrocutes him. She also presses another button to douse him with water, and once he loses consciousness, Melanie takes her phone and breaks the glass separating her from Sloane to help the girl escape. Concurrently, everything descends into chaos at the mansion when one of Brax and JD's model friends gets shot, so they immediately head to the panic room. Then, Brax calls Rourke and informs him of their situation, so the host tells him the intruders are probably Kalashov's men. Kalashov used to own that house and Rourke adds that the problem with having it all is usually other people want to take it. Unfortunately, the panic room closes as Rourke and Brax talk, leaving the stepbrothers outside. Brax is now panicking, but the host reminds them they must see their fantasy through to its natural conclusion and ends the call. Unfortunately, it isn't long before Kalashov's men find JD and Brax. On the other hand, Sloane tries to understand how Melanie ended up on the island thinking she's been kidnapped too. However, Dr. Torture soon arrives and tries to kill Sloane, but Damon saves them by stabbing the doctor. He then tells the ladies to come with him and the two quickly follow him. Meanwhile, Gwen is a nightmare about the burnt man strangling her before waking up beside Alan. But despite that, Gwen just tells Alan to go back to sleep. In the woods, Patrick regains consciousness and walks around upon hearing a sound, only to be choked by the burnt man. However, he soon realizes it's just a dream, but he doesn't even have time to think about it because Sullivan wants to talk to him privately. Sullivan wants to know why Patrick has a picture of him and his son, so Patrick says that's him when he was 9. However, Sullivan doesn't believe Patrick and shows him his ID, asking why it has his son's name and birthday on it. Unsure how to prove he's Patrick Sullivan, Patrick tells his father things only he knows. Eventually, the lieutenant believes Patrick, and Patrick realizes that his real fantasy is to see his father. Then, Patrick tells Sullivan he died saving his men on a classified mission in Venezuela, and Sullivan says they'll go there the next day. The following day, Gwen wakes up and sees a photo of her with Alan, realizing they're already married. Unable to believe it, Gwen decides to talk to Rourke, but the host reveals that they've already been married for five years, adding that they have a daughter, Lila. Sure enough, Gwen sees more pictures of her family in her phone and starts having flashbacks, remembering Lila while she was growing up. Meanwhile, Rourke reveals the island's power, saying he looked for it with his wife years ago. However, she died before they reached the island, so when he discovered that place, he wished for her to live again and return just as he met her. However, Rourke has to stay on the island to be with his wife forever and orchestrate the fantasies for the guests. In the woods, Sullivan starts to leave with Patrick. However, Patrick tells Sullivan his men will die without him, revealing that he was killed when he threw himself on a grenade to save them. But despite that revelation, Sullivan is determined to get home to his 9-year-old son. So, Patrick tries to stop Sullivan from leaving, and as the two get into a physical fight, Patrick points a gun at his father and tells him he'll help him complete his mission. On the other hand, the stepbrothers try explaining to the armed men that they don't know Kalashov. However, the men's leader, Devilface, doesn't believe them and starts cutting JD's arm when JD tells him he has no idea where their money is. So, JD lies and says it's downstairs, but Devilface is still doubtful and takes Brax with him as he looks for the cash. Meanwhile, Gwen feels guilty for having the chance to live with Alan and Lila. She then talks to Rourke and asks for a new fantasy, but the host reminds her the guests can only have one. Concurrently, Damon takes Melanie and Sloane into a cave where Sloane is followed by an evil version of herself. A few minutes later, Melanie sees a burnt man while wading through dirty water in the cave. However, she chooses to ignore it and they soon find a glowing rock with spring water. Damon explains that the water grants anyone's deepest desire, adding that he's been hired by a client to find out what's happening in that place. Damon was skeptical at first, but he soon saw his dead daughter when his fantasy started. Unfortunately, his fantasy turned into a nightmare and Rourke destroyed his sand phone when he tried calling for help. Knowing how to stop Rourke, Damon collects some spring water which can bring a loved one back to life and turn them into a black-eyed zombie. Damon instructs Melanie to call the pilot he knows once she gets to the hotel and to smuggle the water off the island, making Sloane realize she wasn't kidnapped. Then, the rock shows that Melanie's fantasy was to ruin Sloane's life and the two girls get into an argument because of that. However, since they're running out of time, Melanie eventually asks Damon to lead her back to the hotel, 
On the other hand, Gwen finds a sick Julia and helps her before telling her she wants a new fantasy. Gwen then reveals that someone died in a fire because of her, begging Julia to let her correct that moment. After that, Gwen confronts Rourke and demands to get the do-over she really wanted, returning her rings and heading to another room. However, Gwen notices the black water dripping from the ceiling, but that doesn't stop her from reliving her fantasy. Gwen tries to save her neighbor, Nick Taylor, from the fire in their apartment building, and she comes across JD and Brax on the stairwell. However, they don't recognize her, so Gwen proceeds to Nick's unit and ends up leaving again to ask a cop for help to open the door. Then, Gwen realizes that the cop is Patrick, who also doesn't recognize her and says they should just wait for the fire department. Frustrated, Gwen returns to her unit to get a hammer, only to pass out seconds later. Meanwhile, Brax runs and hides in the armory where he gets a gun to shoot one of Devil Face's men. On the other hand, a zombified Dr. Torture attacks Damon and eventually stabs him, but that doesn't stop him from pushing the doctor off a cliff. Unfortunately, that costs him his life too, so Melanie makes sure that he didn't die in vain and takes his map. Meanwhile, Patrick helps Sullivan and his men rescue some hostages in Venezuela, who turn out to be JD and Brax. However, Patrick thinks Brax is one of the bad guys because he's wearing a mask and holding a grenade. So, Patrick immediately stops Brax which allows Devilface and his minion to take them down. But, Patrick and Brax fight back while on the other hand, Sullivan and his team rescue JD and the models. Unfortunately, they're unaware that every bad guy they kill turns into a black-eyed zombie. Outside, Patrick finally kills Devilface and his underling just as Sullivan and his team arrive. Unfortunately, the black-eyed zombie starts showing up, killing JD and Sullivan's men. Sullivan then orders Patrick to leave and Patrick can only watch in horror as the zombies shoot his father to death before finally fleeing with Grax. At the same time, Melanie and Sloane return to the torture room where Melanie calls Will. Sloane tells Will she's been kidnapped and asks for his help, apologizing for cheating on him. Then, she instructs him to call the number Damon gave Melanie and asks her a plane. On the other hand, Gwen is saved by Julia. However, Gwen fails to help Nick and that's when she realizes it's someone else's fantasy. Meanwhile, Brax and Patrick find Melanie and Sloane and they all quickly head for the dock. Unfortunately, Rourke and his men intercept them in the lobby where Gwen confronts the host about their fantasies. Gwen now knows that they were brought there because of Nick, who turns out to be Brax and JD's roommate. Gwen admits to accidentally starting the fire in the building and she also points out that Patrick was there but he didn't do anything. Meanwhile, Melanie reveals that she was supposed to go on a date with Nick that night but she got cold feet. Now that the guests know that everything is just one big revenge fantasy because they all have a hand in Nick's demise, Rourke admits that it will end with their deaths. Then, Damon's plane finally arrives, so Patrick deals with Rourke's men while the others escape. Luckily, Patrick manages to flee when Julia shows up and Rourke just lets him go. Unfortunately, the plane is shot down by Devilface, forcing the guests to run and hide. They then rest by the waterfalls where they all wonder who Julia is because Gwen finds it odd that she saved her. Then, Melanie shows them the map to the spring with an ancient stone and Sloane tells them the water from it makes the fantasies possible. So, they plan to destroy the spring using a grenade and quickly head to the cave. Sadly, they all get separated once they're inside the cave. Patrick is pulled underwater by several hands and it isn't long before he faces a zombified Sullivan. On the other hand, Sloane picks up the canteen that Melanie dropped before facing the evil version of herself. Unfortunately, as Sloane tries to deal with her inner demon, she gets attacked by Dr. Torture. Meanwhile, Brax talks to a zombified JD who blames him for his death. However, Brax is forced to run away when Devilface shows up and shoots JD. At the same time, Gwen follows Lila's voice and finds her killing Alan. Nick then shows up and holds Lila's hand and while he refuses to accept Gwen's apology, he says he's not responsible for what's happening to them. Concurrently, Patrick manages to drown Sullivan but Melanie suddenly shows up and repeatedly stabs him. Gwen quickly searches for Patrick upon hearing his screams and comes across Brax, and it isn't long before Melanie shows up with Dr. Torture and Sloane. Of course, Melanie already took the grenade from Patrick. As it turns out, everything is Melanie's fantasy and she really liked Nick. Unfortunately, he died before they could go on a date and she blames the other guests for that. However, Sloane distracts Melanie so Brax and Gwen can grab the knife and grenade from her. Gwen then punches Melanie while Brax stabs Dr. Torture and Sloane quickly runs away with them. The trio look for the spring and they luckily escape from Devil Face and Evil Sloane. Then, once they find the spring, Rourke shows up and reveals that Julia is her fantasy because she's his wife. However, Rourke's wish was to have her back just as he met her, so Julia would appear without knowing him before getting sick and dying again. Unfortunately, after telling the story, Rourke grabs the grenade from Gwen and he says he has no choice but to give Melanie her fantasy because that's the price he has to pay to be with Julia. Seconds later, Melanie arrives with her underlings and Rourke throws the grenade with its pin into the spring. 
However, Julia talks to Rourke as he walks away, asking him to let her go and save the guests. Meanwhile, a wounded Patrick tries to urge Melanie to let the others go just as Rourke returns, and the host tells them all the guests get a fantasy. Because of that, Sloane drinks the spring water from the canteen, revealing that her fantasy is for Melanie and Nick to be together. Then, a burnt Nick grabs Melanie into the spring and the black-eyed zombies eventually vanish. However, Melanie makes one last effort to get back at the guests and throws the grenade on the ground, leaving Patrick with no choice but to sacrifice himself to save his friends. Then, the next day, Gwen, Brax, and Sloane learn from Rourke that Patrick died as a hero. After that, Rourke eventually lets the guests leave since they won't remember the island, but Brax decides to stay with JD even if it's just a fantasy. So, JD reappears and gets the ladies off the island. While on the other hand, Brax starts working for Rourke as his new assistant and uses the name Tattoo, his stepbrother's nickname for him. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like, it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.